Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Can you hear me? My name is Katu Mashao, but you know, my, my dad is a pastor, so I'm normally used to a resounding amen. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for um, being here. As much as I can't see you, I'll just pretend that you're there. Um, I'm from a organization called New Novation, and you double N Ovation. So you can all follow me on Twitter and on Facebook. You can tag my mom for this session. For the next session in the evening, don't, please, because I don't want to be in trouble with my mom later. <laughs> Anyways, um, part of the things that we do, um, that things that drives us as uh, young South Africans and as a young person who is uh, uh, working in the media space is to tell it like it is. We, we have been in a lot of trouble, we've gotten into a lot of nonsense with a lot of people, uh, but the most important thing is that whether you like it or not, you have heard, you know? So part of the things that I'm gonna do today is to try and just give you the story of where we come from, what we're doing in Africa, our story in, as new innovation, and also just share some bit of experiences in terms of what has happened and what is not happening and how we're trying to move it. We're gonna try and poke some bit of holes in some of the things that institutions locally in the West Asia, Central, Middle Africa, anywhere else from whichever direction that you want, what they're doing and what we see they should be doing. You know how everybody else sees uh, Africa? Oh, by the way, recently everybody sees Africa from the eyes of Trevor Noah. Anybody, Trevor Noah, you know Trevor Noah? Hi, hi, yes, no? Okay, you don't know what I'm talking about. The Daily Show in, uh, on, 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 on TV. Now, part of the things that we, we, we're trying to do today is to also just tell you more about New Innovation, which was established about uh, two years ago. Um, currently, we are focusing on four distinct areas. The first one is uh, coming from the bottom because it's, got the mo it's, the, it's the one that is carrying everything else, is uh, New no Media. New no Media focuses on telling the stories of good news, stories of hope, and changing the narrative about what Africa is like and not what people think Africa is like. You know how for a very long time you've been listening to Ted, Ted Turner, your CNN, your BBC, and uh, a whole lot of other people that have visited Africa on a, on a holiday and all what they did, they went through Kruger National Park to Cape Town and back. And they come back and say, yeah, I've been to Africa. I know Africa. The kind of nonsense has to stop. We needed to start saying, how do we ensure that people start telling the stories from our own perspective, not from somebody else who's a correspondent who flies in, stays at the Radisson and flies out when the uprising is gone. So we are doing uh, that. We said, we're going to tell the stories of Africa from our own perspective. The next thing that we do is the empowerment to say, part of the things that you would realize that is lacking in, in Africa is that young people are not necessarily educated in the w best way that we would like to be educated. And part of those things is that these young people are educated in the spheres that are not responsive to the economy. Uh, and we felt that it's very important for us as a media institution and as a company, as a foundation, to start an, a, a movement that begins to bring about a lot of institutions and associations and donors, those that have got money and those that pretend to have money, you know. And, and we also bring about uh, your institutions like your uh, the foundation where some of their presidents are being arrested, as you would know where I'm talking about, the Zurich guy, uh, one of the biggest institutions uh, in the world, the football institution, to say, can you start redirecting your monies in a way that would have much more impact? On that empowerment, currently we have trained, we are currently focusing on four areas where we're training young people on how to uh, ethically and uh, effectively communicate using social media, and that you can see through our platform on innovation.com. Now, the next element that we've, we, we're working on is educating young people in the skills that matter. We, according to McKinsey report, which was released uh, recently in September, uh, they mentioned that um, 
if Africa could just focus on five areas, and two of those, three of those areas is uh, renewable energy, it's uh, issues of uh, uh, water and sanitation, issues of, mi of mining, uh, and issues of ICT. They mentioned that Africa could actually grow by about 1.5% every single year on a year-to-year -year basis. So we felt that let us focus on those particular industries because in Africa, you do not need the sun. We don't need to be worrying about global warming because those are not our challenges. Global warming is not our problem. It is other people's problems. Maybe in places like this where you guys hardly see the sun for a very long time. So in Africa, we want to take that sun and let's say, let's get, let it continue to be hot. Let us use that particular sun to actually ensure that we power up our own houses. We actually make sure that um, uh, uh, electricity is more sustainable. And we felt that a lot of people in organization keeps on saying, let us go and, and give uh, solar panels, solar uh, this, solar that. But in Africa, those panels are not being manufactured. They are all being manufactured in the West, in the, in the East, and also in India where labor is cheap. So we felt that we needed to train young people in the skills that matters towards ensuring that we are responsive to, to the community. The last two are just more of the things that you would find them in the in our uh, in 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 the current areas uh, of uh, 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 thought leadership in innovation, uh, things that are more intellectual, things that are more intelligent. And this is the, one of the biggest challenges when we, through our presence and when uh, across the se seven continents of, uh, uh, of the world, we are continuing to advocate the issue to say, how do you ensure that you don't just become the only intelligent person in the room, but you, you also get to listen to those people that you think that they are not as clever. So one of the biggest challenges that we found is that the rest of the world is actually just moving towards a, a crowdsourcing uh, of ideas, a crowdsourcing of things and new ways of doing things. But how about just sitting on the ground and using the same technology and using the media to actually access the young people in Africa, the young people in Brazil, the young people in India to say, what are the kind of stuff that you need? Instead of me standing here and quoting the McKinsey report and these people are people that have never been really there and they do not understand the plight of what we're doing. So we feel that from, a, from our perspective, if we can reach as many people to say, can we start crowdsourcing solutions that will deal with the issues on the ground? Can we start crowdsourcing uh, new ways of doing things as opposed to using the textbook and coming back and say, according to science, this is what should be happening. According to facts, can we say, according to what we have seen on the ground, this is what Africa can be done, uh, what Africa requires to be helped. This is what we need on the ground. I mean, for give you, a, for, uh, give you a, a, an example. Part of the things that we, we want to do is to break the myth, showcase the good, expose the stories, or the success stories, and actually ensure that we glorify innovation. But what do we, how do we do that? We drive critical thinking. One of the challenges is that if you continue to educate people and not help them to think independently, you will not achieve it. It's like a, a, a fishing rod and the dam and all those and say, give a, give a man a fish, uh, he shall never learn, but if you give him a, a fishing rod, he shall continuously never ask. That kind of nonsense, I don't know, even know who came up with that, whether it's a fisherman or somebody, doesn't really matter. But these are the kind of stuff that we're doing and these are the people that we are working with and this is what we're trying to do. Some of you might know that right now in Africa, in South Africa, for specifically my home country, there's an uprising, and this uprising is one which I support, where young people are saying fees must fall. And when we're saying fees must fall, it is because in 1994, when the apartheid era was demolished, it was the young people that were promised that they shall get education for free for all. And now, 2015, over so many years later, you're still finding that education is much more expensive than it was in 1994. So we're using that new media to actually start driving an, an, a, a call to say, let us bring 
bring down the fees such that each and every young person can be able to access education that should not necessarily be free, but education that should be affordable. So this is how some of the things that are ha happening in Africa through new media, through internet, is impacting the community and it is impacting everything else that needs to grow to ensure that young people grow. The young people of, the, of today, the generation Y, uh, Y, they, are, they know what they want, they, they are confident, they are open to new things, they are social media obsessed. I mean, most of you already, uh, ever since I've started talking, some of you have Googled to check me out, some of you have, fo have not followed on Twitter, but this is exactly what young people are doing. We felt that it is most important for us to reach them at their own level, and that is why in the previous slide we've, been, we've highlighted that we've reached over one million people, one and a half million people in less than eight months, and that is a fact. Now, we're moving on now to say, can we get rid of the stereotypes to say young Africans are not educated? I mean, look at me. Do I look like I'm from Africa besides the skin color? Yes? No? Doesn't matter. Is there anybody there? Can I just... <laughs> Great. This is what I'm trying to get at. Can you see the demographics of the kind of people that we have on the screen? This is what Africa looks like. It is not the kind of stuff that you've, you've been used to or you've been told to. We, we, we don't uh, ride in an elephant. We, we drive cars, and this is where, who we are. These are some of the success stories of the stuff that we've been doing, where we've had your, uh, the UN head of, for women uh, uh, presenting in some of our programs where we bring about young people, get, get them together, and we get to train our events to trend much bigger and better than uh, television stations in South Africa. And because young people are receptive to the kind of stuff that we're talking about. I mean, you look at what happened uh, recently when uh, Akon then says uh, he's, about, he's got a, starting a project to electrify 600 million houses. Guess what the, fo the, the focus on the media was? Bruce Jenner is now called Caitlyn Jenner, really? That kind of nonsense for us, it doesn't help us. And it goes on and it continues to trend. I mean, these are some of the things to say. You, you bring about young innovators, you get them to, to start sharing their experiences, you get them to actually share and advise how other young people are doing. And we are moving around the, the continent now of Africa, starting to get more and more institutions to say, can we now get a, a movement where we say we call it a Good News Wednesday movement? Everybody else has got your throwback Thursdays, Women Crush Monday, Men Crush Friday, all that kind of nonsense. Can we now go back and say we want a social good kind of movement where worldwide and globally we know exactly where we're going. We say Good News Wednesday. And this is what we're doing. Here are some of the stories that we have published and I'm starting to rush because of time. Look at the, the world first drone that has been, the drone port that is being built in Rwanda. Who would have thought? Do you know what that will do for Rwandans? We, we, hunting shall be redefined. Heading cows is now redefined using drones. Talk about a biolight stove to cook and charge your phone. I don't need to say much. While you're cooking, you're busy charging your phone. Can you see what it's the new technology and the kind of stories that we want to share is doing to Africa? There's a lot of good spin that you can do on that. Investors now know that when you go into Africa, you cannot say um, there's no, not enough technology. Bring that particular technology. Let's have a drone port. Let's us get deliveries being done for medicines by drones and the likes. A young, a young Nigerian student building one of the most intelligent robots in the country, in the world, uh, the first South African quadruplegic, quadruplegic to, to climb onto the Kilimanjaro. These are some of the things that we are more excited to share. And we're saying we want to share most of the kind of stuff that a whole lot of you that are here are sharing. Let us go out there and have a movement that says there is a need for us to share the good news. There is a need to change the narrative. Come on board, support us, let's follow, follow us. We are currently uh, syndicated over about uh, 12 different radio stations and about uh, four uh, different TV stations across Africa. And our platform is that which says, as long as it's good, as long as it's going to empower somebody, bring it on, bring it on, we shall be able to, to take it further. Here's my last point. My president, uh, um, 
the former president Tabombeki, he says, I'm an African. I owe my, my beings and, uh, to the values of Africa. And I'm saying, I am, an, I am a global citizen. I owe my being to my own human being. I don't own my being to anybody else. And I do not want anybody to stand there and start talking about Africa as if they have been to Africa, as if they were born in Africa. We want to use technology, we want to use the media to actually go out there and say Africa is a, country, is a continent. Africa is not a country. As a last parting shot, somebody was asking me recently to say, Katu, do you know Tom? And I said, who's Tom? And remember, I'm from South Africa. It's like, no, Tom, man, Tom, Tom lives in Ghana. Uh, in, 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 do, you, do you know him? And I was like, dude, do you know how far Ghana is from South Africa? It's like over almost 10,000 miles away. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. I hope I have been helpful to you.